We have people from diverse background, and we will be discussing about design systems and uh, trying to go deep down and understand that what had been their experience in setting up their systems in their organization, right? So uh, I will be starting with a question, and I would like to uh, for to kind of hear about, uh, hear your opinions, all of your opinions on that as we kind of move along, right? So the first question here is that um, we see more and more organizations are now building their own design system. Uh, there's a lot of hype because there's a lot of talk about design systems. There's, everybody is discussing about that. Uh, and since in this, in this group, we have people who have built it, who have used it. So we would like to understand that is, is it kind of, do you feel it's overhyped or is there a real value it adds to the organization? Okay. Uh, so there are, of course, uh, obvious uh, values that we sometimes know, and there are sometimes uh, values that comes out of it after we have uh, implemented it, and then we realize that, oh, wow, this is also something that's getting done with the system, right? So we'd like to understand uh, and hear from you, each of, each of you. Shabi, you want to take a start at this? Yeah, sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, so that's a very interesting question that you just raised, Shayak. Uh, I do believe, so I am from the side that believes that design systems are necessary. I believe terms like material design, fluent design, these terms may be getting overhyped, but the need for, the, for a design system does remain. Why? Because uh, off late, we're growing in, we are all working across uh, geographies and in, in uh, distributed design teams. And it's very important that as growing design teams, as people who are looking to onboard to new design systems, we have a consistent, a uniform language that we can learn converse in and uh, work together and hopefully then give back to the system. So I believe that, you know, for, for people from diverse backgrounds coming together, it is something you need a basis to communicate together and to have uh, to even build cons consistent experiences for your users. I mean, for them to, because we are now living in uh, connect an, a connected ecosystem where a user is on a mobile phone and then they could be on a laptop or even a smart TV the next moment, it's important to give them a connect, uh, uh, you know, that uh, consistency and experience. And th that is where I believe a design system does play a major role in giving them that uh, coherent sort of an experience. Uh, Steve, you would uh, like to add something to that? Uh, in my point of view, uh, design uh, compared to uh, maybe uh, 10 to 20 years ago, currently design is a play key uh, important parts on the business itself. Uh, we have so many in Indonesia, we have so many startups who already have validated business model. And then uh, there are only uh, several key players and UX and design is the key point to win the market. And then having uh, how we deliver product fast, how we build consistently high experience, high quality design is a must thing to do and design system help us to grow to the next level. And it's also bring uh, our collaboration to the next process where design become more inclusive because design system is not only for designers, it involves developers and the mindset itself involves all the business uh, stakeholders. That's in my, in my opinion. Cool. Uh, Ken? Yeah, I, I hope they're not overhyped because I've been working on them for the past six years. Um, yeah, I think, you know, outside of the obvious benefits of reusability and, and, you know, portable code and that sort of stuff, one thing that gets overlooked is the cultural benefits of a system. Right. When you have a team working across, you know, various products that are typically siloed um, and near the connective tissue between those, like that's a big benefit for an organization. Um, and uh, I think people don't recognize that immediately. So, you know, when you get you know, executives being trying to you know, quantify your value, right? That's not something that you can easily, easily quantify. But when you look at kind of the quality of the products as a result of the collaboration, like as a direct benefit of maybe not necessarily the system itself, but the way the system works, um, right. that's something I think we should pay more attention to. Yeah, I think, I think that's something that people are also discussing about, right? Uh, about community, would you like to? <laughs> yeah, so I, I definitely don't think they're overhyped, but I, I would offer kind of a word of caution that um, understand the problem that you're trying to solve for your company with a design system. If it's just doing a design system because it's the cool yeah. thing to do, um, that's not probably gonna get you as far as if you really go out and you know think of this like a product that you're designing. Your design system is a product. So who are you helping? What problems are you trying to solve? Um, it may be different than the problems that Facebook or Ovo or Salesforce are trying to solve, right? Um, so make sure that you do your homework, do your research internally to understand the process well and, um, and know that you're really solving problems that people care about with that design system. Um, but other than that, yes, I completely echo uh, what you said, uh, Ken. I think the, um, 
sort of hidden benefit uh, was it's one that we didn't expect, but finding that developers and designers who really didn't talk much about the way that they were making things started to talk more. And teams that are in different silos, different parts of the organizations, they start to come together because you have something for them to come together to talk about. And, uh, and like I said, I wasn't expecting that when we rolled out our design system, but um, it has been uh, sort of the hidden and secret uh, benefit of a design system that uh, I, I would say I'm almost most proud of in, uh, in what we've delivered. That's amazing, yep, yep, okay. So uh, uh, why don't you follow it up with uh, a little serious question that how do you measure the success of design system? Right, okay, um, Nick, you wanna take a stab at it? Sure, uh, my first answer is I don't know. Um, it's, uh, it's not easy. Um, don't have any magical formula or thing like that to share with you. I think there's lots of things that we could go measure um, and I think we probably don't do as good a job of measuring that as we, as we should. Um, but I will say that the, uh, the things that I see and the reasons I know that it is adding value is I see people reach for it as the tool of choice um, and I see systems being created, products being created with it that um, I didn't even realize, uh, like we didn't push it on them, they just went and used it. Um, and so seeing that and hearing anecdotally from designers and developers about how this helps to speed up the process and get things created faster. Um, so I, I kind of know it is, but I couldn't put a number on it. And sometimes that's frustrating. Ken? Uh, we can put a number on it at Facebook. Okay, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have, we, like, for those who were in my workshop yesterday, I kind of hinted at some of the tooling we have. Um, and we write a lot of our own tooling at Facebook. Um, and one of the things we do for the design system is we have a little, a little bug that sits on the browser and you can actually look at code coverage for how the components are on the, on the products, right? So you can run that across all of them uh, via screenshot tests or otherwise. So we get a sense of like what our, what our coverage is. Um, and we have uh, metrics as a team that we want to hit, which tells us who we need to go work with to, to meet that goal. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's rare, like I've worked, like we didn't instrument things at GE, we didn't instrument things at, at Salesforce, so we looked at kind of those, you know, soft, you know, inflections that you're, you know, it's working, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I would say the, the irony is at Facebook, people already get it, they know the value of it, so it's, you know, we don't necessarily have to prove ourselves as we would at, you know, maybe GE, uh, but yeah, we do measure it that way via code. Okay. Uh yeah, for me, uh, mostly uh, there's three things. Yeah, uh, for sure, uh, reusability, clarity, and then the consistency. But I have a, a cool story in uh, when I working in Tokopedia before before this before at OVO. Uh, we are have a mobile site, which is the the metric is uh, first interaction uh, loading page. So uh, it's measured uh, when you are in first interaction to the to the uh, browser. Uh, before we implement the design system, uh, which is the code library, it uh, almost took 10, 10 seconds. And then after we uh, defining our design system and defining a code library, we uh, uh, fine tune everything. It can reduce until uh, three seconds, and it becomes a Google's, Google success story of our mobile page uh, website in Indonesia. And that, that's one of the uh, key impact that uh, you can show uh, the, 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 the success metrics of the design system, how the impact itself. So that's my additional point. Shavia, you want to add something? Sure. So I agree with what everybody said, and maybe what I said say will be a repetition of what they've already said. But I, uh, like they've all mentioned, I believe the uh, the it can be measured in different ways. There is an internal measurement and there is an external measurement. When I say internal, uh, there is a team that works on the design system to uh, to maintain it, to work on it, to add to it. How uh, how is it being adopted across the organization? Is it helping designers get better at, at you know faster and building more uh, consistent and uniform experiences? Is it helping designers and engineers work better together? Because I believe that des the design system always works along with a component library. So you know, is it making that collaboration simpler? Also, something that is a little hard to measure, probably because you know design has very it has a sensory aspect to it. So, are your designers happier with the design system in place? Is it you know is it uh, does it add delight to their lives? Is it making uh, design a more pleasurable, joy, joyful activity for them? Does it help them communicate better? And then, of course, the external measurement, are, are your users happy with it? What is the ROI? What is what is the difference that they see between uh, you know? 
coming from a previous design system to a newer one or probably migrating to a design system from a place where we didn't have one. So some of these things can be measured like uh, Ken said, at Salesforce we're in a place where we're trying to quantify these and we're trying to instrument for these. But yes, some of these are, uh, these, uh, some of these are things where you have to go to speak, speak to users and get a sense of you know, whether your investment is working for them and it's uh, helping, you know, build better experience for, uh, experiences for your users, basically. Interesting. Uh, since you, um, some of you mentioned that we are able to me measure some part of the design system, do you think we are able to take them to the uh, leadership and kind of, uh, you know, kind of, kind of have some uh, say on the table? Uh, are they at that stage or is it like uh, we are still at a very fundamental level? We are just measuring it and maybe someday we will be there where we can take it to the uh, a management meeting and say that this is performing at a certain level and you know, like we have this uh, result out of it. Well, what, what's, your, what's your thought on that, Ken? I mean, yeah, I mean, we can do that. I think what we're seeing right now at Facebook is merging kind of that, that metric I talked about along with the social aspects of it in improving the quality of our products, uh, which goes to your point about you know, user satisfaction and are we making it easier to get their job done? So we have an initiative in place that you know, the design system is a core part of, that we look at quality across all the products um, to where you know, I think it will potentially become a release gate for stuff. If it doesn't meet that bar, like, you know, it's not going to go out. Um, and the design system is a core part of that. OK. okay. So coming to the, uh, a little more, um, again, um, a little more difficult question, what are the biggest challenges that you faced when setting up a design system? Nick, you want to start with? I'm sure you would have a lot of <laughs> things to share. Yeah, biggest challenges. Um, I'd say we, so this is a, a mistake to avoid uh, for you out there um, who are pursuing this journey as well. Um, we got people on board, uh, our leadership, they understood the, why we wanted to create a design system. They put forth the money to uh, get a team together and actually go do it. Um, but what we failed to do was put uh, into their minds this understanding that a design system needs to have a product team supporting it for the long haul. And so we, we ended up you know, having seven people working on this design system to get it out, released, and then kind of iterated with, uh, with kind of a, a round of fixes. But um, after that, uh, it was left to uh, like two people in their spare time. Um, and that's not the way to do it. Um, so you've got to have uh, that conversation up front with leadership to let them know. Uh, not that we didn't ask for, for the team later on, but I think making that expectation very clear up front uh, is, is something uh, that I would recommend. Uh, and so the challenge then is uh, how do you uh, help people to see that the product team is needed and is necessary when uh, the leadership may just see, hey, people are using it, it's working. Uh, what more do we need to do? Yeah. Uh, so being able to tell those stories well, and this is probably where doing some of the instrumentation and capturing some of this stuff can help even more. So um, that's, I'd say, one of the challenges is uh, treating, you know, making sure you've set yourself up well for the long haul, not just an in initial implementation. Yeah. Ken? Yeah, some of the biggest challenges. I think, you know, in um, what I saw at, at GE and maybe even maybe some of Facebook is people think the system's taking work away from them or taking creativity away from them. Developers, you know, likewise, like I want to make my own thing. So it's it's getting people to shift their mindset to realize that it's a benefit to them and it's going to allow them to focus on the bigger problems. You know, you don't have to recode a drop down every time or a button. Don't waste your time on that. Like focus on the big stuff that's going to going to make an impact um, for your customers. And that takes a lot of socialization, you know, to get people on board with that, which means including them in the process of ideation and bringing them along. But, um, you know, I think that's just consistently a challenge when you bring out a system. You still have that mindset. You know, eventually it'll probably change, but it's something I've seen where, you know, people kind of look at you and they look at you as a design police when you come there and you know, critique all my stuff and you have to kind of change that, that tone. When you work with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Steve? Uh, yeah, quite similar. Uh, but. Uh, in my opinion, there is uh, another challenge that I can add. Okay. It's more about maintaining the design system itself. Maintain After you have uh, defined design system, you have already implemented, maintain itself is another challenge. How to make sure that design system don't kill your designer creativity? Uh, after we launched the design system for several uh, months, our designers uh, is like, okay, uh, just I will just follow the design system, and then yeah, don't, don't want to put my uh, effort to uh, exploring the others, and then it's make our 
design kind of uh, uh, left behind compared to uh, other new style or maybe new 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 trend in, in the design that it, that have a good uh, user experience. Uh, so the, the the challenge is is more about how to uh, make uh, that design system as a platform for collaboration, mm -hmm. and if we want to explore it, it's very open and. It's uh, if we want to solve a problem, it make us uh, become uh, uh, what I can say is a broad mind mindset designer who uh, think that if we want to contribute a component, we, we need to think broad across our products. That that that's the, the, the mindset that we have to push to the, to the to the designer. We we are not limiting them. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think we'll come back to this part again in more detail. Okay, uh, but before that, Shabe, you want to add to this? Just a couple of points. So uh, something that I've noticed, like I said, we're working across distributed teams. One thing that I've noticed is, especially when you're transitioning from one system to another, or say from some sort of a status quo to a new system, is getting everybody to onboard, encourage them to adopt it at fairly the same time. That's kind of hard because you know you want them to sort of get onto it at a particular time so that everybody starts designing with the new system in place. Two uh, is to getting to encouraging them to contribute back to it. It sort of stems from uh, uh, what Steven has just said. To contribute back to it, because you know, if we don't contribute back to it, it just, a design system is a living system. It needs to grow, it needs to get better. How do we, you know, get to the next stage? Because the more the users, uh, the more designers adopt, adopt it, the more they're able to, the more problems they're able to think of that, you know, could, could have been solved in a better way. The original designers who set it up, I'm sure there's, there's, there's so much what you, that you can do beyond it. So getting people to contribute back to it. And then third, because we at Salesforce, we're a, we're a very customer-centric company to, uh, to sort of convince your customers as well to, you know, to tag along with you in this journey and for them to onboard into the new system as well. Because we have a flourishing network of partners uh, who help us maintain things like these. So getting everybody to, you know, just, uh, just on this ride, it's, that is, I think, a huge challenge, getting everybody to sing the same, same tune at right. the same time. Right. Can, can I add one more thing? Uh, Y'all reminded me in your comments. Um, so one of the other challenges that we faced was um, teaching people how to think about using a design system. So not just how to mechanically use it to you know, pull down the code and the components and access the documentation, but to teach them to think about how to be strategic with using a design system. Um, it's, it's, it's fairly simple to train people on the tactics of using it, but to, to teach kind of when it's right to kind of try something different because we want people to understand that the design system doesn't solve 100% of your design problems. Yeah. There are a lot of common problems that the design system solves, but what happens when you come to one that is not quite solved by the system in the way that we anticipated? Um, we want people to feel that they can solve that problem the way that they always have, but while, while kind of referencing and respecting some of the, the general um, kind of style and guidelines of the design system. So um, some people we found had the misconception that uh, it's, it's the law, I just have to follow it, you know, every single component, uh, and that's all I can do. Um, and others uh, didn't uh, respect much of the components at all. So there's a balance between that, and so getting people to think about when is a good time to try something and evolve something and solve a problem a little different way, and when you probably shouldn't just redesign the button because you want to. Um, so that's one of the other challenges that we've seen. Do you give the example of Legos in such, in such setting? Because you were working in Lego at one point of time, and you know, Lego blocks are exactly that. You can use it to kind of build any creative yeah. stuff, but yes. you know, at, the, at the fundamental level, they are the same pieces to some extent. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love thinking about it as, uh, as Lego building blocks. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. <clears throat> okay, so um, coming to the next question, like, actually, this is kind of follow up on what you were talking about. That who owns it? I mean, who owns the design system? And then, like, is it a single person, or is it a kind of partner mode? How do you manage it? Okay, uh, so at first, uh, the background behind it, the main supporter when we have initiative for design system is not designer in my case. It's the engineer. You know, modularity, reusability, they already know it uh, decades ago. And for designers, I think it's a new thing for them because design already complex, be, be part of the product itself. And then, who own it? In my uh, point of view, it must be owned by uh, Every product development team. Product development team consists of uh, engineering, product design, and also uh, business who will handle the, the, the operational on the product itself. Uh, why? Because, uh, you know, the, the point is 
of design system is how we make uh, all of us focus more on the problem instead of building uh, or crafting uh, something uh, re or reinvent the wheel. That's, that's, that's the main problem. So how we uh, move faster and then uh, using design system as a tools to help to help us to, to to win the market, like I say before. So, in my opinion, it must be owned by uh, all the product uh, development team. Okay. Ken. Yeah, I mean, there's a subtlety to that. Whenever you know, I go out and do a roadshow to teams, I'm very careful to say like that we curate the system. Like my team curates it. We don't own it um, because you know, like you're saying, I want everybody to feel like they have a stake in it. Yeah. Um, so technically, yeah, we have a team that does, you know, manage the code and manage the guidelines and all that stuff, you know, for us. And but, you know, I want everybody to feel like they can push against it and contribute back, or you know, um, they have they have a stake in it as well. And I think that's really really important. It's a it's a super subtle thing though, because like you know, it goes against like we we own this. You know, you can't change it. You know, if you want, rather we're going to stop you from doing it. So, yeah, that's kind of my perspective on it. Is like you know, curation over, you know holding it close and owning it. Right. Yeah, I, I second that. Uh, it's a similar kind of uh, situation. We try to make sure that this feels like something that belongs to the, the community at large. Um, and we, but, but to my point earlier, if you don't have somebody centrally to curate it, then uh, you know, nothing really moves and nothing really happens and changes and improves. So um, it, is, it is a uh, partnership there. Um, but yeah, I think the, the point of talking about it as curation or facilitating this community is, uh, is the right approach. Um, the, um, uh, the other thing that, uh, that I've seen is, um, it, it's gonna vary by company, kind of maybe who takes the lead in some of this, because um, similar to, to what you said, um, Steve, the, uh, the primary customers at ExxonMobil are our software developers. It's um, partly a function of uh, numbers, because we had just been growing our design practice and didn't have uh, a huge design uh, team that was uh, doing a lot of this work. We were trying to scale the impact of a small design team through a design system that could help to enable the teams where they didn't have as much design support as they needed or uh, there were engineers that just needed sort of a, uh, a starting point to, to get um, some of this uh, you know, better user experience into their, their products. So um, we have uh, a lead who is uh, a front-end developer and um, we see a lot of benefit of being able to connect with that community directly through him. Um, but of course, then we have other designers who contribute and champions and things like that. But um, in, our, in our organization right now, uh, the, the primary kind of lead is, uh, is a front-end developer. So before coming back to you, Shabir, uh, <clears throat> I just want to take a small detour here. The fact that, see, I mean, we four are coming from a little leadership position and we want, we have a vision of the design system in an ideal way, right? At the end of it, the, uh, the junior designers or the young designers who are executing it, and typically designers come with a, you know, a, a, a teaching or education of being crafty. I mean, like they have to craft something, and a large part of that is taken away from uh, them when we do uh, have a system like this. Uh, how how does that, uh, how can these uh, young designers build up the maturity to kind of understand that how can they contribute to the system as a whole? Uh, I would like to uh, hear all of your opinion. Shabab, I want to start it from you because uh, you have probably just gone through that, you know, a journey of uh, owning the entire craft to kind of contributing. So yeah, how is that? Yeah, so to add to what Shayak said, so I'm in a sort of a position where I'm an individual contributor, I'm consuming the design system, as well as uh, I'm a, I'm a proponent of it as well. So what we have at Salesforce is uh, what we're transitioning from an older design system to a newer one right now. And we're a distributed team. Right now it's very important to educate people and to onboard them at the same time, like I said. So we have an interesting ambassadors program at Salesforce where wherein every member, you know, one member of every design team understands about the des design system, explores it, tinkers with it, and advocates for it in their respective design teams. They also very interestingly serve as a bridge between engineers and designers. So they're able to speak, you know, they're able to sort of mediate and get to a position where uh, the design system can fulfill engineering needs because what happens sometimes with an in, uh, with a design system that's growing with that's something that's just coming up is uh, there will be a pattern but there might not always be a corresponding uh, 
component to support it. So, you know, what do you do in situations like these? Where do you get to a path where experience is not compromised? Because that is a major fear with uh, entry level designers that, you know, they're not going to be solved, uh, able to solve the problems in the most optimum manner and that the system is going to uh, inhibit, uh, hinder their creativity. So solving, uh, you know, reassuring them on that front and seeing opportunities where probably, you know, we could pick up something from the design system and that it could still step into the place and take care of things. That is a very important part. And that is where we have uh, these ambassadors in place at all our teams. We have uh, something called office hours where we set up sessions with the central design team. So, so ours is a co-owned uh, co one as well because I, I, I believe that's the model that works best. There is uh, the need for a team that dedicatedly looks after after maintaining and adding to it, but other teams who actively consume and give feedback so that the design system grows. So ours is a similar model, but we have an office hour system where uh, individual designers, again, that is something that I help set up, establish, uh, you know, set up some time with the central team, understand why a co certain component was built and how the, this new designer can uh, possibly incorporate it to solve uh, the particular problem that they're looking to solve in the best possible manner. Steve, you want to add something? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, so changing in the mindset is, is one of the challenge also, uh, every, especially for the uh, designer who, who really skilled, high skilled in crafting or uh, building the, 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 the stylist design, you know. And uh, I, I remind them that uh, what is designer? Designer is a problem solver. So, so you as a designer, not only crafting the, the styling only, but you have to solve the problem. Uh, it's okay with the product, but how it, for the visual, okay. The visual, the problem is this kind of component need to be used across all products and need to be uh, consistently high quality. So that's a problem that you need to solve when you are exploring things. So I, I give them the, the challenge. It's okay. Everybody can uh, uh, contribute to the design style, but that uh, that's thing to be keep in mind. So yeah, I. Uh, Back then, I, I, I at some procedure, you, you need to give a, a PRD, PRD is Pro Product Requirement Documentation, to uh, enhance or, or build uh, the component so, okay. those, so they can uh, learn a structural thinking. After they uh, already have that mindset, I remove that policy because it, it's, it's make our process long and then as long as they have the structural thinking and then when they are uh, improving or designing and put some of their idealism, they still have that a structural thinking and uh, have it well tested across the product, across the experience to be implemented in design system, it's okay. Uh, we can review uh, their uh, commit or, or their, their code or their design. Okay, I think, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this as less and less of an issue. Um, with the, at least the candidates we're seeing coming into Facebook, right, and what they're coming out of school with, uh, it's more about the broader problem solving. And we do a when you're a new hire, we have a design camp. Your first week at Facebook is design camp, where you learn everything about you know how design works and how you should be working cross functionally and that sort of stuff. And part of that is uh, you know a, a segment on the design system and how you work with it. Um, so it sets them up up, up front for that. Um, but you know inevitably there's going to be questions, or you're going to see someone that comes in and changes the radius on something or makes the blue brighter, and um, we just document the heck out of everything, right? And really get meticulous with why we've made decisions, um, to, uh, especially for stuff like that that are foundational so that when someone comes in and says, look, I, you know, I'm gonna change this because I want to, or we're like, you know, we have an artifact to point to and be like, well, here's why it is the, the way it is. Um, and, um, you know, people will usually get a paragraph or two into that and be like, all right, I got it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it back. But, you know, it gets, just goes to the point of like, when you're working on a systems team, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't exist until you write it down and, and you really have to be like overly articulate with the decisions you're making so that people feel confident in them and really transparent and, and why it is. But in general, like I'm seeing it uh, less and less a thing. Like I also, during that design camp class, like I'll generally do a survey. I'm like, who's worked with the system before? And you know, over the last year when I've done it, every time like more hands go up. So people are generally getting more familiar with the concept. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> So just uh, one, one thing to add is, yes, I do think that there's some of that concern, and I've heard it from some of our designers, um, both junior and also some of the kind of mid-career designers, I think. Um, actually, some of the junior designers, I think, have been relieved to have a design system because that means they don't have to go and justify some of those decisions because you can point to the, the source and everybody in the company has accepted 
this is our design system. Yeah. So uh, it kind of takes away some of the points that might have to be debated about designs and uh, kind of helps them to kind of build some of that confidence in how to work with stakeholders and how to navigate uh, working in projects and things like that. So there's, there's, there's good and the bad. Interesting, interesting. Um, <clears throat> We'll move on to something a little more, um, you know, like, uh, uh, like a little larger topic. Like, uh, what do you think is the future of design system? Because we, um, in one of the design system talks that I was giving at one point of time, people did ask question about what about communication, uh, what about uh, new systems like AR, VR coming in, uh, and and in in general, that where do you see the design system evolving to as more automation and MIML, uh, sorry, uh, AI ML keep sipping into the systems, where do you see the design system moving forward to? Oh. Uh, great, great question. Um, I, uh, I, I don't know for sure, uh, but I think uh, one thing that I'm seeing is that we have uh, more and more of the kind of immersive tech and uh, you know, immersive experiences, AR and VR, that we have a team at ExxonMobil that is working on some, some cool things there. And uh, we've got designers in that team now. And so they're starting to find some of these patterns and some of these uh, kind of human interface guidelines that are going to go along with that. And I think that uh, what we will see out of that is some of those patterns becoming a system of, of sorts. And how that ties into the, the overall kind of system, is it a multi-platform system, is it uh, kind of in isolation and then we bring all the systems together at some point, who knows. Um, I think that's still uh, a challenge uh, that we'll see on the horizon, but um, I, I definitely see it starting. Interesting. Yeah, I think there's a really interesting area, you know, in get, getting into things like voice, right? Like how do you, with, with all the variance in language, you know, how do you systemize that? How do you maintain a, you know, the way your, you know, your company's uh, voice speaks back to them, you know, how do you systemize that? Um, and then some of the AR, VR stuff, like, you know, we have Oculus at Facebook. It's, like, really interesting to, to consider how, like, that's even, that's more tangible. So I think the voice stuff is really, is really interesting to kind of figure out how you systemize that. Um, you know, I think uh, as we get into, like, some of the, the AI stuff, too, you could see, to some degree, like, self-maintaining systems, right? If it's, you know, linked back to, like, how it's, how it's used or, you know, you're instrumenting your, your products, how they're shipped out there. Like, you could see that data kind of get looped back in and kind of steer the direction uh, of the system. Um, even, you know, and I guess a more practical approach would be, like, you know, maybe it maintains your, you know, your, your sketch file or your, your style guide or something like that for you to where you take out some of the maintenance of it. But I think it's pretty interesting. We're just getting kind of on the cusp of that. I've heard little teams talking about that from here or there. But. And how tone of voice is, uh, is not only on the written side, but also on the, on the, on the uh, voice and then on the uh, chat, uh, the personality, how, how we make it consistent across the, across the uh, customer facing point. So, so, so I think that's, that's my uh, homework now, uh, things to do. And then the other thing is, I'm agree with Ken, uh, how a design system can make in itself because you know as it now uh, in my case there is still so many uh, manual or uh, like uh, how we measure how we uh, uh, managing the design system using only Google Sheets and then uh, yeah uh, stuff like that uh, how can it be uh, uh, there is a helper or tools that make everything uh, easier for, for us to manage the design system and reach our initial goals which is design system is making us focus on uh, problem solving instead of uh, reinventing reinventing the wheel. I think that's the. So I I uh, totally agree with what everybody said. Just to add to it, uh, so right now with design systems in place, uh, some design designers already believe that we're hindered. And with intelligence coming into the picture, I think there is another risk or concern of, you know, hey, what are we going to do now? Intelligence is going to come in, and you know, there's not going to be enough left left to do for us. Uh, I believe, however, that it's a welcome change because we're we're now going to go away from manual tasks to you know becoming enablers. So uh, imagine with things like intelligence, AI, and machine learning coming into the picture, uh, there are already self-training models available. Uh, potentially, there could be a system, a model that works around design systems that could self-learn and self-train, self-maintain, uh, like the other panelists said. So, uh, it put, could possibly be like cooking, where you know you have a set of ingredients. So, say you have a set of components uh, and building blocks available, like Legos, and uh, you give that knowledge to the system, 
and it learns to combine. So it could possibly pick up a card from here, a list from there, and possibly generate a new component for you. Or you know, you could ask it, uh, "Hey, I'm working on a on a scenario like this. It could possibly even recommend to you, and you give it feedback, and it you know, it that's how it becomes uh, even better and better." Uh, but a designer's uh, role is going to change in the sense that you know we wouldn't uh, we would possibly and we already have with things like Zeppelin we have long stopped making uh, style guides right so uh, in the future we're going to become enablers where we guide and we maintain these system you know there's a system over a system which learns and which helps uh, build things for us but the 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 measure of human intelligence I, I think will continue to, to stay even in this. Era of um, you know intelligence that's that's slowly coming in.